Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Worshipful Wednesday. We thank God for the wonderful ways in which he blesses us and keeps us. He keeps us in perfect peace as our minds are stayed on him. And it's right at the middle of the week. I hope you're at the peak of your praise. Give God all the glory, the honor, and the praise and the worship that he is due. For our God is alone worthy of all the praise. Today, I invite you to look with me at the Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter, verses one through nine. This is about Jesus and his brothers. You know, the text begins to lift up the let us know that Jesus has traveled all around Galilee. He is with all of those disciples. He is with all of those who are his brothers and sisters in the faith. And now they come to the season of the year that they are uh, right outside of Judea. It is where uh, the Jewish leaders were, were plotting his death. But Jesus knows that it is time for a very important feast and in the Jewish calendar known as the Festival of Shelters or Booths. It is now here that Jesus says to his brothers, let's leave here and go to Jude go to Judea where all of those followers can see all the miracles that are being performed. Now, we must understand here in this text that uh, Jesus has become famous. Everybody knows who he is. He has done great miracles. He's there demonstrating the hand of God being at li being alive and a real in within him. And he's showing them that the kingdom of God is now with all of humanity. Now, even his brothers uh, didn't believe in him because they were going like, we've seen him all of his life. How can he be the Messiah? Well, you know, even in that, sometimes you and I, we must always understand that there is a messianic secret, how God does not reveal to all of us everything that we think we should know, ought to know, want to know. But sometimes those things are hid. They are hid from even the very sight of those that are around them. Now, it is at this time that Jesus goes up and he begins to share with his brothers, the world can hate you you will find out that you will be accused of evil, but you have to go on. You know, in this life, we begin to see that there are so many times that people will not like us, but it's not us that they don't like. It is God that they doesn't like. Jesus tells them that you will find out that there will be people who will come against you, but they're not coming against you. They're coming against the word of God. They're coming against the power of God. In this life, there will be people who say they want to love God. They want to serve God. They want to follow God. But you'll find out the standard that God has for us all is much different than the standard of man. Jesus is now being faced with the situation and the predicament that he is doing what the father has sent him to do. And that's the most important thing to do. You know, you and I, we live in a life of duality. We live in this world, but we're not of this world. We hear the things of this world, but we must also hear and listen to the voice of God. In this little powerful text, we begin to see how Jesus is with his brothers, his disciples, all of those that are around him. And he lets them know that you have to always listen to God more so than you listen to anything else. That's the challenge that we face in our current society. We hear so many things about so many people, but we must listen to God and not listen to the voices of the naysayers. We cannot listen to the voices of the political pundits. We cannot listen to the voices of the things in this life to tell us to enjoy the temporary moment and forget that there are consequences that are far greater than we ever would have imagined. My brothers and sisters, I want to invite you, as all of us are invited by God, to listen to the voice of the Lord, that wherever he sends us, we must go. Whatever he asks us to do, we must do. Because the benefits are not just in this world, but the greatest benefits are out of this world, being in the presence of God. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go, and I look forward to sharing with you again on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.